In this video, I will explain what a manifold is and give three unusual examples – colors, trees, and probability distributions. When you have a set of points or observations in statistics, you can represent them as a scatter plot in the plane. More generally, if you have objects with notions of distance and angle between them, you can project them onto a plane using random projection, as here, or some other dimension reduction algorithm, such as PCA, TSNI, or UMAP. But is the plane a Euclidean space the only space in which we could plot or embed our data? Couldn't there be a better one, more accurately respecting the shape of the data? There are several simple alternatives. Instead of a plane, the data could live on a sphere, or a torus, or a saddle, or something more complicated. We can compare some of those surfaces using the notion of curvature. Flat or Euclidean space has zero curvature. Spherical space has a positive curvature. Hyperbolic space has negative curvature. On the plane which has curvature 0, the length of a circle of radius r is 2 pi r. On a sphere which has positive curvature, the length of a circle is less than 2 pi r. On a saddle which has a negative curvature, it is more than 2 pi r. For those examples, the curvature is constant, but for more complicated surfaces, it can vary and be sometimes positive, sometimes negative. Flat, spherical, and hyperbolic surfaces are all around us. Cobalt are a visual example, but there are many others. Let us now present a few surprising examples of such spaces or manifolds. Humans have three types of color-sensitive cells in their retinas. For them, color is a three-dimensional quantity. These are the three primary colors. It is different for other animals who may have more, birds, or fewer, dogs. There are different ways of representing those three dimensions, different ways of choosing coordinates. Computers use RGB coordinates, red, green, and blue. Printers use CYMK coordinates, cyan, yellow, and magenta. Artists use a color triangle made of red, blue, and yellow. Are those representations equivalent, or is one better than the others? Are things that simple? If you listen to painters, they will tell you that things are indeed more complicated. Three colors, red, blue, and yellow, are not enough. To faithfully reproduce the colors you see, you are advised to use two reds, two blues, and two yellows, a warm and a cold version of each. And perhaps also a few secondary colors, in particular greens. It starts to look more like a disc than a triangle. To complicate things further, those illustrations only show two dimensions of color. They are easily expressed in polar coordinates. The radius measures saturation, the angle, the hue. But what about the third dimension? We can make colors lighter or darker, i.e. closer to white or black. While doing so, differences between hues progressively disappear. As we move towards white or black, the disk becomes a point. The color space looks like two cones. This is the HSL space, hue, saturation, luminance. It is not quite what artists are using. When fully saturated, not all colors have the same value. Some are darker, some are lighter. Pure yellow is lighter than pure blue. We may therefore prefer to use tilted cones. This is the HSV color space, hue, saturation, value. While those color spaces are more intuitive than the RGB one, they still have a problem. They are not perceptually uniform. The distance measured in those spaces does not reflect what we perceive as the distance between colors. For the same measured distance in those coordinates, we can find pairs of colors that are undistinguishable to humans and pairs that are clearly distinct. In their quest for a perceptually uniform space, scientists in the 1940s measured, experimentally, which colors were similar to humans and which were not. For each color, they defined a set of undistinguishable colors around it, its macadam ellipse. In flat space, we would expect those ellipses to be disks, all of the same size. But it's not actually possible to find a coordinate system in which those macadam ellipses are disks. Color spaces are not flat. They are manifolds. 
We can, however, try to approximate them with a flat space. This is what the LUV and LAB spaces are doing. Their definitions are complicated and the coordinates a bit counterintuitive, but in polar coordinates, they are very similar to the HSV space. This is the HCL color space, which you should be using if you are making plots on a computer. That was our first manifold example. Color spaces are three-dimensional, they vaguely look like two tilted cones, but they are not flat. On to our second example, trees. A tree is a graph, a set of nodes with edges between some of those nodes, connected and with no cycles. One concern when we draw trees in the plane is that the further we move away from the root, the less space we have to put the nodes. This looks unavoidable. If all the nodes have the same degree, the number of nodes grows exponentially with the distance, but the space to put them, i.e. the length of a circle, only grows linearly. But what if we could draw trees in hyperbolic space? We have seen that in hyperbolic space the length of a circle was larger than in the plane, and it can grow fast enough. Most machine learning algorithms need coordinates. To feed them trees, or more generally graphs, it may be preferable to put the nodes in hyperbolic space rather than Euclidean space. Statistical manifolds. Our third and last manifold is more abstract, probability distributions. In which space do probability distributions live? How can we measure the distance between them? To fix the ideas and keep the dimensions small, let us focus on univariate Gaussian distributions. Since they have two parameters, we expect a two-dimensional space. But which parameters should we use as coordinates? Mu and sigma square, mu and sigma, mu and log sigma. To see if one of those is suitable, let us imagine a ball around each probability distribution containing statistically undistinguishable distributions. How large should it be? If the standard deviation is high, the distribution is imprecise and the ball should be very large. On the contrary, if the standard deviation is small, the distribution is more concentrated and any inference on it is more precise, the ball should be smaller. These balls cannot come from the Euclidean distance with mu as the first coordinate and some transformation of sigma as the second, because the distance would not depend on sigma. We have seen a few examples of hyperbolic space, but these were surfaces embedded in three-dimensional space. What does the intrinsic geometry of hyperbolic space look like without the embedding in three-dimensional space? What would we see if we were inside that space? We would still have a notion of straight line, but they would look a bit different. For instance, here is the shortest path between the two probability distributions we were considering. Since distances are short-term when the standard deviation is higher, first increasing the standard deviation, then changing the mean, and finally decreasing the standard deviation back to its initial value is much shorter than just changing the mean, keeping the standard deviation low. This is the Poincaré half plane. The straight lines, they are called geodesics, are half circles centered on the horizontal axis. Vertical lines are also geodesics. Conclusion. We have seen that spaces could be curved, curvature measuring how large circles are when the radius grows. We have seen that colors, at least for humans, formed a three-dimensional space looking like two slanted cones. We have seen that its curvature could be estimated by looking at macadam ellipses and that the HCL color space was a flat approximation. We have seen that trees and more generally graphs were difficult to draw in the Euclidean plane because of the lack of space as you move farther away from the root, but that hyperbolic space provided a better alternative. We have seen that univariate Gaussian distributions did not form a Euclidean space with coordinates mu and sigma square, but a hyperbolic space, the Poincaré half plane. References To understand how color works, you can turn to books for artists, for instance, those by James Gurney. Material on color grading for photographers, such as Joanna Castro's tutorial, may also be of interest. Some books on color theory may be relevant, but most just contain an accumulation of supposedly universal but arbitrary facts about color. The paper on the color space R package contains a more detailed presentation of color spaces and advocates the HCL color space. 
Over the past few years, there have been countless deep learning papers on hyperbolic spaces to embed trees or, more generally, graphs. Most of the material on statistical manifolds, or information geometry as the domain is called, are very technical. I cannot recommend any of them. Rigorous definitions. I have not defined and even named the mathematical objects we are dealing with. I would have needed the notion of a metric space, a set with a notion of distance, that of continuous map, that of homeomorphism, before being able to define manifolds. But these are not yet the objects we were dealing with. We were looking at Riemannian manifolds, manifolds with some extra structure, which eventually allows us to define angles and distances.